All right, hello again, pre-calculus people. Uh, so today's video is not really pre-calculus, it's more algebra, uh, but we do, we're gonna spend a little bit of time on a, just reviewing some basic properties of quadratics. And again, for, for I know you've seen it in a lot of other classes, but we're gonna review factoring one more time because that has to be something that you are comfortable with even because it just doesn't go away in like any other math course. So we're going to review that, review that one more time and then get ready to do some other things with polynomial functions moving forward in the next week. So we have two, two basic formats of a quadratic function. So this is what we call the general form. You could also see a uh, called standard form, uh, depending on the textbook you have, the teacher you have, something like that. So standard or general form, it's that ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the most common way you're going to see those things. That's where, you know, you take that, you factor it, you find your zeros and stuff like that. The main thing, like property-wise, is remember if that a value is positive, then the vertex uh, is going to be a minimum value and the parabola is going to open up. So that's your situation where it kind of, kind of looks like this. That's your parent function anyway, where your vertex is there. And then if A is less than zero, the vertex is going to be a maximum. And the parabola is going to open down. The only thing that controls the direction of a parabola is the A value. The B and the C do, you know, change the y-intercept and where the vertex is located and stuff like that. But, but as far as the directionality, of the parabola, and if the vertex is a min or max, uh, that's only controlled by the a value. Now, the other format you're going to see is vertex form because, well, it gives you the vertex. And the main goal, starting on Monday, is we're going to review a process called completing the square to turn this into this. Okay? And again, you probably remember this from, from your algebra two days, but if you see it in this kind of format, the hk is your vertex okay the a is still the same a value right so the vertex is still going to be a minimum if a is greater than zero and the problem is still going to open up but the main thing is now we also have some information about the vertex you can also find the zeros you know as far as solving it and find the find the x-intercept from this form we'll talk about that next week uh, but if you have this already, then you automatically know the vertex. The catch is we're going to take this and figure out what the vertex is directly from that for, directly from standard form, uh, kind of in uh, just in a couple steps. Uh, and remember that h in the formula is x minus h, so that means the vertex actually is x. Uh, sorry, h comma k. In other words, if you saw something like x minus um, x minus two squared plus one then that means your vertex would be at 2 comma 1. Same thing, if your, ver if your a is less than 0, again, that doesn't change. It's still going to be a maximum, and the parabola is going to open down. Same a value controls everything. But again, notice your hk. Your hk is still in the same spot. So if this was like x plus 3 squared, uh, minus 4, now your vertex is going to be at negative 3, negative 4. The k value stays the same. The h value switches. Okay? Now here, so this is just your steps to factor, and I do, I'm do. i going to run through some examples of factoring pretty quickly. Um, but you should know how to do that. The one thing that I, I'm also going to give you guys, I made a couple years ago, I made a uh, like a like a weird little flow chart of factoring. This will be uploaded under the drive into uh, into our folder. Uh, if you if this will help you kind of visualize what to do on the different steps, then that would be then you're welcome to use that also. Okay, but it's always the same steps, right? So the first thing we're going to look at, and again, I'm going to zip through these. If you want to uh, pause the video and see if you can factor and solve these without me even starting to do it, you can do that. Uh, or you can wait to do a couple of examples and then pause the video later on and do those kind of last couple of examples. But remember, folks, if we're factoring this, if, if your a is 1, obviously we want them all to be equal to 0. I'm not going to try to trick you on that one. 
But if your A is 1, then we're looking for what can multiply it to C and add to B. So what multiplies to 24 adds to be positive 11, and that would be 8 and 3. The order doesn't matter. And then once you have, so that's called factored form, which is a thing. And then if you want to take that and actually find the solutions or find the zeros or find the x-intercepts, they're all the same thing. You set each of those factors equal to zero and you solve it. So in this case, x equals negative three and x equals negative eight. Okay. Main thing on when x is already equal to one, when a is one rather, the main thing is you want to make sure and just keep track of your signs. So in this case here, uh, x squared plus 2x minus 35. Again, what multiplies the negative 35, but those same values adds up to be positive 2. And that becomes positive 7 and negative 5. And again, the order doesn't matter. And again, you set those equal to 0. So x equals negative 7 and oops, and x equals 5 would be your two solutions on that one. And remember, that's, that tells you where, where it's crossing the x-axis, if it does at all. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is uh, keep an eye out for GCFs. You know, something that you can divide out of each term. It does have to be all three of them, uh, just to make things a little bit easier, number smaller, stuff like that. So notice in this case, I can divide each of these terms by 4x. They all have a 4 in common and I'll have an x in common. So if I take a 4x out, then what do I have left over? I've got x squared, 6x, and 9. And now we can just factor out the inside. So what multiplies 9 adds to be 6, 3 and 3. So we can write that as x plus 3. We can write it as x plus 3 times x plus 3. I'm just going to do x plus 3 squared. It's one of our special cases. And then when we solve this, Again, we do have to consider the outside too. So we set 4x equal to 0, and obviously x would be equal to 0. Just divide both sides by 4. And then x plus 3 equals 0, x equals negative 3. If you wrote negative 3 twice, that's fine. It's what we call a multiplicity. So you really only have to write it one time. It does have three solutions, but that negative 3 repeats itself. Now, the last three, again, I'm going to zip through these pretty quickly, but please feel free, pause the video, maybe after the first one, do the last two by yourself, make sure you can understand the process. So whenever you have an, uh, an A value that's not one, the easiest way to go about doing this is, some people call this the AC method, because you literally multiply the A times the C. So, and just rewrite it, so it'd be X squared plus 13X, plus 40, and then you factor it just like normal. So what multiplies a 40 adds a 13, that would be 8 and 5. But here's what everyone always forgets. Whatever you multiplied by, we need to go back through and divide by that. We basically cheated by, by doing that multiplication and rewriting it. So we have to undo our cheating. Okay, so simplify the fraction if you can. Obviously, that just becomes 4. If the fraction cannot be simplified, the 2 gets swung over in front of the x. So we're going to write that as 2x plus 5. And that is your factored form. Again, you can always multiply this out to make sure you get what you started with. But that's our factored form to get the solutions. Same as always. Set, it equal, set each one equal to 0. So x equals negative 4. This one takes two steps. You can subtract 5 and then divide by 2. So your solution there is negative 5 over 2. Okay, again, I encourage you to pause the video, do the last two, see if you can find those solutions, and we'll go from there. Multiply. So we've got x squared minus 19x minus 42, 14 times 3. What multiplies a negative 42 adds to be negative 19. Notice 21 times 2, so x minus 21 and x plus 2. 
divide by 3. So you got x minus 7 doesn't simplify, so you got 3x plus 2. There's your factor form. Find the solutions. And there you have it. Last one, sometimes you do have to do the, the division thing and the swinging thing to both of them. In this case, if you multiply 10 times 3, you get 30. And again, what multiplies the 30 adds to be negative 11. So we know both factors have to be negative. It would be negative 5 and negative 6. Divide both of them by 10. And again, I can reduce both of them, and you should do that first. So that becomes 1 half. That becomes, if I can find them both by 2, uh, x minus 3 over 5. And then swing. So we're going to have the factored form of 2x minus 1 and 5x minus 3. And then again, we solve it. And then solve the other one. And there's your solutions. Okay. Factoring, we've said it before, I'll say it again. Factoring isn't going to go away. Uh, so make sure that you understand the process if you need some help. Contact me, email me, come in for tutoring. I am here to help you out and make you a master at factoring. Until next time, stay safe.